Just jamming, man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Is somebody yeah. taking it? <laughs> I hope.
String, these strings are new, so I'm stretching it out a little bit here. So is this the premise of the show, to sit around fucking around like this? That's it. That's Otherwise, good. I'm not going to take this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, don't, you know, I figured that you, this would be more of a question and answer. Well. Sh show me the coolest trick you got. So uh, give me some questions. <laughs> show me the coolest guitar trick you got. Cheap. cheap Cheap what? trick. A cheap trick. A cheap, a cheap guitar trick. Not the band. I love cheap. <laughs> yeah, I love cheap trick too. No, but you know what I'm saying. You know, some stupid. stupid. It's acrobatics. It has nothing to do with like playing. You know, just, well, uh, like a, just let like, me just ask you something. Like, it's like going like this. It's like if you. Uh... <laughs> I thought it'd be stupid little stuff like that. You know. <laughs> okay. It's, well, when did you start playing guitar? <laughs> I started playing when I was seven years old. Seven. Got a copy of Meet the Beatles uh -huh. and a guitar. It's any friends from your brother or my father. My father. Mm -hmm. Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan. No, my father. He was a frustrated bebop trumpet player. I never really heard him play. Okay. He quit like when I was a kid. He was in the movie business, like uh, mm -hmm. assistant director. Is he still? Uh, no, he's not around. Man. He's been gone since uh, '94. Mm -hmm. I miss him a lot too. So uh, you start playing Beatles. I mean, you know, like every kid, you saw the mm -hmm. Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show, and mm -hmm. it was all over for you guys. I don't know. When was the first time you saw them? Ventures. It was the Ventures. You start from. Oh, yeah. 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 Same age, man. You know, right. You know, we look, well, that's give or take a year, but you know that's really big in Japan back in early '60s. You know. So I, I I hear that they're well, my actually my brothers. You know. Yeah. Was like uh, well, born in '40 something. Yeah. They start really hooking to guitars and start playing. Yeah. Every door. Dick well, Dale I just, and all yeah, that. Watching my brother, you know, I was this kind of piano kid, it forced me to uh, practice piano. Oh yeah. But looking at the. Do you still read music? Yeah. yeah. That's good. Not guitar. Piano. <laughs> well, it's, you know, same, well, anyway, same rules apply. Anyway, the piano is like I had to, okay. But so looking dig. at the, my brother, so uh, he wants to, wanted to, you know. Oh shit! But my brother is so strict and don't even think about it, touching my fucking guitar. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, he still is though. Like, Did he have like an old Strat or something like that? Did no, it's a real fake Japanese. Okay. Looks like. Right. Looks like it. Yeah. Do you still have it? Of course I do. It's, That's right. I wish I had my first guitar, man. It's first really, electric guitar. That's art. Because my, my first guitar was that I got with the Beatles was a, uh, called the K acoustic guitar. Um, Strings were like you know like that far off the neck. You know, like <laughs> full punishment. More like this, man. Full punishment guitar, man. <laughs> well, man was like you know if you can make this thing play, I'll talk. We'll talk. We'll I talk know. about the electric guitar. And especially, no, what was it? It's the hardest song the Beatles. No. That was a beat. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's very hard for us, such a guitar, right? Davis is mine, you know. So, uh, when did you start performing as a band? Well, my first band, I was nine Seven years old. Seven is too young to perform a band anyway. No, right? no, I was, I was about nine years old mm -hmm. when I was playing with the guys that were 13. Mm hmm. You know, we were, and it might be well, the ice. big hot lick at the time, you know, the big set. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, then the Jimmy Page played that uh, on, on yeah. the original record, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 but yeah. see, back in the day, when we were such kids, I didn't play it right. Yeah. I was going. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody hit me, he goes, no. That makes, that's a big difference. See, that's, the uh, that's the biggest difference, right? When, you, when we start playing guitar, so there's always guitarists there. Yeah. Even if it's a professional or not. Just, right. No, 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 that's not right, you know. Well, we, we're also, teaching each other. You remember like, learning, each learning other. solos off of records, mm -hmm. you pick the needle up, put it down, drive mm -hmm. your parents completely out of their minds because you're playing the same, mm -hmm. trying to find the same, you know. Yeah, how do you yeah, play? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to go. Yeah. 
trying to pick up the lid. I took three years to copy Crossroad, Eric Clapton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, that's one of the greatest. That's one of the greatest. So I, you I, perform band with her, it's kind of junior Yeah, yeah, junior and I started to get really serious about it. By, by the time I was 11 years old, I was actually making money at it. Not oh, a lot, just on the weekends, playing at parties. Uh -huh. Had a little band together with some guys. And then more guys were around, so you're playing, whoever had a gig, that's whose band you were in. Right. If you had a gig at the school or, you know, we played our sixth grade graduation, yeah, yeah. that was the first big moment, like, you know, because we, we could play, like, we were playing back in the USSR and played Foxy Lady. Mm -hmm. I had a fuzz and a wah wah pill. Mm -hmm. I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. and, oh, wow, what and, a kid. And, 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 then, and then we, you know, and I, could, I could bullshit my way through. I wasn't mm -hmm. playing like Hendrix. I mean, who the uh -huh. hell can anyway? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was, for the time, all the little girls screamed for us and shit like that. I said, oh, shit, point. man, I'm living the dream right now. And that's a point. I'm yeah. living the dream. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was like this dorky kid, and all of a sudden, people liked me after that. Uh -huh. They didn't pick Hopefully. on me because I was really small, mm -hmm. and I was bad at sports. <laughs> so they used to fuck with me all the time, you know? And then when they found out I could play the guitar, and I had that shit going on. All of a sudden. Now, that, the, there weren't a lot of kids my age playing. Mm -hmm. but I'm sure the same with you. Yeah, yeah. You were kind of a freak of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, look at that kid can play. Even before I knew what my dick was for. Like, I was <laughs> playing the guitar, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, back then, uh, yeah, everybody could play at least chord C. Or well, yeah, you, you had to learn all the standards. Yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe. I'm in the way back oh machine. Oh my right, god. <laughs> We're showing our age here, Char. Kids, people thought that uh, Tina Turner did that first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then when, when Jimmy came along, mm -hmm. it was a whole ball game change. Which one? Page or Hendrix? Hendrix first. <laughs> well, I got into Hendrix first. Well, yeah, you, Hendrix came, and you know, the first time you heard. That was in the 1967, mm -hmm. man. I was like, I was like Still. nine, ten years yeah. old, you know? And if you knew how to play this chord. Yeah, sharp nine, yeah. You, you, you call the sharp nine, you call it the Hendrix E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hendrix, 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 Hendrix E. <laughs> Regularly, it was like this, you know? Yeah. Or like, yeah, yeah. Like, that had an edge sharp to it. Nine, yeah, that had an edge to it, man, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was the, the shit. First, you know? first time I played this chord, I go, oh my God, I'm Hendrix. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for all day long. Yeah, all day <laughs> Yeah, even the Foxy yeah, exactly. or the Purple Haze yeah, or yeah. all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, and then that I had to open up the whole other, you know, and then there's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I still think it's one of the greatest guitar solos ever recorded. Mm -hmm. That live I've crossroads. I've never seen a Hendrix alive. No, man, I, I was supposed to go see him at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, really? But my parents saw pictures of him, and you know, they said, like, no, you're too young to go off of this stuff. <laughs> I would have shit to see Jimmy, man. Uh -huh. So that's a really early 70s, right? So yeah. you're already a professional well, in the 70s. Well, I, I was mid-70s. Mm. I mean, my high school band was like me and Michael Landau on guitar. Oh, really? And uh, John Pierce, Steve Picaro. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Picaro, David Page, mm -hmm. and Carlos Vega. Are they in the same school or just same All, area yeah, kids? Same, same. Oh. Well, we all went to the same school. David Page went to another school. Mm -hmm. In L.A. But their anyway. fa they, they met through their fathers who were doing the Glenn Campbell show. Oh, the okay. Glenn Campbell's another great guitar player. He <laughs> yeah. sat in this room a whole bunch mm -hmm. back in the 60s, man. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, this was the very room where so many hit records were made. I mean, they, they purposely left the floors and everything funky. Mm -hmm. This is what it looked like back in like 1967, you know what I mean? I know, this are black. Look at all Indian this old, look, yeah. Old, yeah, old school, it's man. It's kind of hippie, yeah. <laughs> look at the speakers. I mean, look, when was the last time somebody used those speakers? I mean, you gotta be kidding me, you know what I mean? That's some really old school shit right there. So uh, you uh, started performing with these kids, Cats? And yeah, I, mean, I started playing these in, in high school. That's when I became aware of what a studio musician was, mm -hmm. because I never knew what that was. Same here. You know what I mean? I, I, I thought, well, what is that? I mean, I thought the monkeys actually played. You know, <laughs> <laughs> when I was crushed when I found out, I, I figured that. I was looking at their hands and going, this doesn't look right. I know. Except I know. Only, only the Mike, the guitar player, he's the only guy that he, he actually played right. the chords. Mike Nissen. Looked yeah. like he was playing. Mm -hmm. But the other, the other cats, just... 
The other cats were scuffling, yeah. you know. They all sang. They did mm -hmm. really sing. Mm -hmm. I used to go out with uh, Mickey's Mickey's That's daughter, right. yeah. Amy. We were good friends, anyway. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen her in years. She's a beautiful girl. <laughs> but he, but I got to hang out with him. Mickey's a really cool. Yeah, I'll ask him. recorded in this very room Maybe, right yeah. now. Oh, That's wow, really wow. possible that that could have been recorded right here. <laughs> I, those are great, but those, all those guys are session players. Tommy Desco, mm -hmm. uh, Louis Shelton played guitar, and that Glenn Campbell played on mm -hmm. all those records. Glenn was the number one session guy before he got his own thing together. Okay. So anyway, I found out about all these guys, Larry Carlton, mm -hmm. who was uh, one of my heroes and somebody that I get a mm -hmm. chance to work with all the time. I've known him since I was 17. Mm -hmm. I used to go hang out at his house, uh -huh. and you know, Jeff was playing, Jeff Bacar was playing mm -hmm. with him at the time. You know, they did all the Steely Dan records, and, right. and Steely Dan was like, we were like a Steely Dan cover band in 1972. Mm -hmm. with okay. all the, Landau and I played all the guitar parts, mm -hmm. you know. And we had vocals together, the whole mm -hmm. thing. Steve Bacar was a relentless band leader, rehearsing us with the vocals and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We had two singers besides the one, all of us. Wow. Like and Jeff used, so Jeff used to come down and play with us, even when he was in Steely Dan, because mm -hmm. he was few, three years older than me. Mm -hmm. And Donald Walter came and saw one of our high school gigs, and we were all doing right. all Steely Dan songs. <laughs> oh, wow. And, he was like, and they were like, going like, we should just hire these guys to stay home. Lucky boys and girls. <laughs> well, I had a very lucky life. I mean, growing up in Los Angeles, around musicians of that caliber. Mm. I mean, Jeff Picard was already a legend when I was still in high school. Mm. And yeah. like, you know, just to get to play with him and all those mm -hmm. guys, I mean, that was like the pinnacle of where you could be mm -hmm. at. And then I got, started getting into doing demo sessions uh -huh. for people, you know? Because I was studying, we were all studying rapidly at that yeah. time. Lando and I used to practice together. We used to, you know, we'd take private guitar lessons. I was taking orchestration mm -hmm. and arrangements. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were just like going to improvisation mm -hmm. school in LA and you'd meet all these other musicians. And, and we were all really hungry and really dedicated for mm -hmm. it. And yeah, an opportunity, you know, knocked on the door. I was mm -hmm. very, 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 very lucky, man. Just to be at the right place at the right time. It's not happening right now? There's no scene anymore. Okay. I mean, back when, you know, when we, in, the, in the 70s, when I started doing this stuff, you'd walk mm -hmm. in there and go, who do I get to play with today, man? Mm -hmm. Oh, Jeff's on the drums. I mean, who's playing keyboards? It'd mm -hmm. be like, you know, Michael Lamartine or somebody like that. Yeah, you go, and you get to um, meet, or Steve Gadd mm -hmm. was in town from New York mm -hmm. with Will Lee, mm -hmm. and you were playing on a session mm -hmm. with those guys because you read, uh, right. oh, wow, I'm a big fan, I love your music, and then you become friends. Mm -hmm. And then guys from England would come in, you know, guys from Nashville, mm -hmm. and everybody would play together, and you get yeah. to meet everybody. But yeah. nowadays, everybody just, you know, if you do any sessions at all, it's like you show up and overdub. <laughs> Nobody really plays all at the same oh, time. Man. Now, when I make my own records, and I'm sure you're the same way, of course, we play at the same time. Yeah, I'm trying. I to. need to get a vibe in a room. Yeah. You know, somebody know. plays some lick, then mm -hmm. you start. There's no improvisation. Everything's mm -hmm. just cut and paste. Yeah. I was talking to um, some. You know, David Williams, a guitar player. He used to play with Michael Jackson, a fun okay. guitar player. We used to do Quincy Jones sessions together mm -hmm. back in the day. He said. You know, he's a black cat, and he's doing, like, uh, rap records and stuff now, and, and like, they'll go in, they'll, he'll just play for, like, you know, the verse and the chorus, and they'll stop and say, okay, that's cool. He goes, no, man, I want to play it through the whole song. <laughs> but they it doesn't edit. have to be the same exact thing right. every time, you know? They so these it. cats don't get it, you yeah. know? It's like they don't understand it. With us, you had to get a, capture a performance. Mm -hmm. And then if you fucked up, you could go back and maybe punch in what's, yeah, what's yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not to say that everybody was flawless, <laughs> because that wasn't the case, but, you know. Well, Pro Tools is kind of... It's a great tool. It's a great tool, yeah. It's a wonderful tool. toy. I mean, to, you know, to be able to, like, do non-destructive editing, mm -hmm. and, you know, have a million tracks and never yeah. have to worry about it, recalling mixes, you know, you can move vocal, comping vocals and I mean, stuff uh, like that. Yeah, it's, it's uh, great, but, I mean, time if you can't play, you can make somebody sing I know, and I know make... What's exactly. Yeah. You can make somebody who has no talent sound like they got the shit going on. It's just the mo most ex expensive toy. <laughs> yeah. Like there's this, uh, I got this recording studio in the valley, right, called the Steakhouse, and a lot <laughs> of young people uh, work in there. Mm -hmm. And like the, these drummers are going there, and they're they're scuffling through the parts, man. You know what I mean? They're just yeah. barely making it. <laughs> barely. And, and then they it. get up and go like, "Hey, that's fine, man. Just pro tool it." <laughs> and, then, and then some guy would like spend all night long, you know, putting uh, everything together and fixing it. Guy comes back the next day and he sounds like a genius. He goes, "See, I told you." <laughs> it's like guys, I mean, you just have to That's put some bullshit, sweat in. Man. Yeah. You know, you gotta sit in there and fucking like, you know, yeah, until I you know. get it right. You know. 
play it a hundred times if you have to. That's why it's really hard to find a real musician these days, you know, because there are so many sex too. It's different because uh, even our age, they do the proto shit. Some people, you know. Hey, yeah, Charm, yeah. man, we live in the 21st century, man. Leave, leave up to me, man. So, come on, you know. My answer to them is always, but can you play? Yeah. Really, take.